This is part two of our proof of the inverse function theorem. So in this video, we want to prove our claim, the claim in the red box. Okay, so we're gonna prove this using the contraction mapping principle. And you can look in Taylor, um, the, the reference to Taylor that I posted on Canvas uh, for the contraction mapping principle statement and proof. So the idea is that of the contraction mapping principle is that in a complete metric space, um, if ta minus tb is less than or equal to r times the absolute value of the difference between a and b, um, where r is some constant which is strictly less than one, then and uh, greater than zero, which has to be true because we're thinking about absolute values here, then uh, T has a unique fixed point. So we're going to, our goal is going to be to show that TV is a contraction map. Then we'll get a unique fixed point and from the method that we use to show that TV is a contraction map, we'll also show the second conclusion that the derivative of k at zero is the identity. So before we do this, we need to define some um, auxiliary spaces and numbers. So let's define a sub v to be the supremum over all um, vectors w, which are closer to zero than two times the length of v of r of w. So recall that r is this function um, by which f differs from just the identity. And r has these two properties, r at zero is zero, and dr at zero is also the zero matrix, or the zero linear transformation. And we're also going to define x sub v as the following set. So it will consist of all points in Rn, which are closer to V than this constant AV. We will show that TV is a map from XV to itself, and this will help us show that TV is a contraction map. So first of all, um, to show that TV is a map from XV to itself, let's consider what conditions we need to show to prove that TV of U is an element of XV. So this is exactly the same thing as saying that V uh, minus R of U is an element of XV. By the definition of XV, this means that V minus R of U minus V is less than or equal to A sub V, and the Vs now cancel, and what I'm left with is the condition that the length of R of U is less than or equal to A sub V. So how is this going to follow from the fact that U originally is an element of X sub V? Well, U being an element of X sub V means that U is at least as close to V as the constant A sub V. So the difference, the distance between U and V is at most A sub V. And now notice that by the triangle inequality applied to the triangle u, v, u minus v, we get that u is less than or equal to v plus u minus v, and u minus v is less than or equal to a sub v. So what we're going to show that is that a sub v is less than or equal to v if v is small. And once we show this, then we'll have that u, that absolute value of u is less than or equal to 2 times the absolute value of v, which should look familiar because it's the condition that we use to define a sub v. So that means that r of u, the Euclidean norm of r of u, is less than or equal to the supremum of all w less than or equal to 2 including norm of v, r of w, and 
that is just equal to a sub b. So we started from showing, um, from the fact that u is an element of x sub v shows us that t v of u is an element of x sub v because t v of u being an element of x sub v is equivalent to this inequality here, which we have shown. Okay, so our goal now is to show that a sub b is less than or equal to v if v is small. Okay, so um, so because so the proof of this um, fact is down here now because um, dr at zero is equal to zero. We can say that the absolute value of r at u is equal to some power greater than or equal to 2 of the absolute value of u times s of u, where s of u is some positive function. And, you know, depending on how differentiable um, r is, s might not be necessarily continuous. But it is always possible to, it is always a function. It's always possible to write this down in this way. And S is positive. So that's all we need. Um, so because we're assuming that U is less than or equal to, um, okay, so, so it's a little bit confusing here because this U and this U are not quite the same U. So we want to show that, um, that the supremum over all w less than or equal to show that a sub b, which is the supremum over all w less than or equal to 2 absolute value of v, r of w is less than or equal to the absolute value of v. So let's replace these um, u's in here with w's just so we're not confusing ourselves. Okay, so we know that um, we know that r of w. So, so what we want we want to show that all r of w's are going to be less than or equal to the absolute value of v, and if v is small. So, we can replace r of w with the absolute value of w to the power of k times s of w. And um, we know now that we know that w is less than or equal to 2, the absolute value of w is less than or equal to 2 times the absolute value of v. So we can rewrite this inequality to say w, um, so re replace the w, absolute value of w to the k with 2 to the k times the absolute value of v to the k. s of w less than or equal to the absolute value of v. And I can rearrange this to tell me that v to the k minus 1, I'm looking for v to the k minus 1, which are less than or equal to 1 over 2 to the k s of w. So this is what I want. I want there to be some, I want it to be possible to find a neighborhood of zero such that this is true. Because s of w is greater than zero, near zero, choose v so that um, s of w is greater than zero if the absolute value of w is less than or equal to two times the absolute value of v. And then the right-hand side, the right-hand side of the boxed equation becomes uh, a con well, it doesn't necessarily become a constant, but it becomes less than or equal to this maximum over all w less than or equal to two absolute value of v. So, so we're going to choose some v naught um, absolute value v naught s of w. And this is now just a number. So it uh, becomes less than or equal to 
1 divided by 2 to the k times this maximum. And now this is just some number, and I can always, um, if I make my neighborhood smaller, I can always find a neighborhood of 0 smaller. There is some v1 such that if the absolute value of v is less than or equal to the absolute value of v1, then the boxed equation is true. So v to the k minus 1 is less than or equal to 1 over 2 to the k s of w. Because s of w on this smaller, um, because on this smaller, possibly smaller, set, s of w is less than or equal to this max that I um, discussed up here. So I can always make my um, domain, or sort of the set of v's I'm looking at smaller and uh, achieve this inequality. So that means that if v is small enough, then a sub v is less than or equal to v, which is what we wanted to show. Okay, so finally, we need to show that, so we've shown t sub v is a map from xv to xv. We need to show it's actually a contraction. And the, so the, the thing that we need to show is that tva minus tvb, if a and v, b are two elements of xv, is less than or equal to r times a minus b for some r strictly less than 1. And so the, the power of this is that, um, is that r is sort of uniform over all of x sub v. So notice that tv sub a minus tv sub v, the, actually there's a v you know, in t sub v, so the v's actually cancel, and what I end up getting is r of v minus r of a. So what, I'm, what I need to show is that r of v minus r of a is less than, strictly, is less than um, or equal to r of the absolute value of the difference of a and b for some r strictly less than 1. And the way, what, how we're going to do this is we're going to use the fact that dr at 0 is equal to 0. So choose... So, so we've already sort of restricted our neighborhood of v's um, so that, uh, you know, so that a sub v is less than or equal to the absolute value of v. So now we're going to choose v even smaller potentially so that x sub v is... Um, so that if u is an element of x sub v, then the largest entry in dr at u is, is strictly less than 1. So is maybe, maybe strictly is less than or equal to some number r, which is strictly less than 1, to make sure we have a uniform bound. So let's just draw a little cartoon of what's happening here to make this a little bit more clear. So I have v. I've shown that if v is close enough to 0, then a sub v, which is the distance um, defining x sub v, is less than the absolute value of v. So this um, neighborhood x sub v doesn't actually include 0, but it is close to 0. So when v gets closer to 0, it gets closer to 0. And so now... Let's let gamma of t be um, the curve 1 minus t times b plus t times a. And let's define g of t to be r of gamma of t. Now, I'm going to differentiate both sides. Uh, so this would be dg at t is dr at gamma of t, d gamma at t. 
but d gamma at t is just the vector a minus b. And since all, everything here, in fact, is a vector because the um, domain of this function gamma is the reals, I can just take the Euclidean uh, norm of both sides. So this tells me that this is the Euclidean norm of this vector um, times the vector a minus b, the Euclidean norm of the vector a minus b. But I already know that the largest entry in dr at any point um, gamma of t, and is uh, and because because x sub v is convex, gamma of t, every point in gamma of t is an element of x sub v. I know that this is less than or equal to r times the absolute value of a minus b. And by the mean value theorem, I know that the absolute value of g at 1 minus the absolute value of g at 0 is less than or equal to the absolute value of dgt. So I get the inequality that I want because g at 1 is precisely a, uh, sorry, g at, um, oh, oh, okay. Yes, g at 1 is precisely r at a, and g at 0 is precisely r at b. So the final thing to show, okay, so let's, let's backtrack for a second. So what we've shown now is that t is a contraction map. So by the, so TV is a contraction. So it has a unique fixed point K of V. So that is one of our two goals. The second goal is to show that DK is zero is the identity. But this is actually pretty easy. So we want to show that k of v is v plus some little r of v, where r of v is little o of the absolute value of v. Um, so by the definition of x sub v, we know that k of v is an element of x sub v. So I know that v plus r of v minus v is less than or equal to a sub v. This is just um, equal to k of v minus v, and which is and it's also so if I cancel out the v's, this is just the absolute value of r of v, and a of v is little o of v, because in fact we know the stronger statement that a of v is actually less than or equal to the absolute value of v. Okay, so we're done with the proof of the inverse function theorem.